Hello and welcome to another C-Sharp coding homework exercise for Windows Forms. In this one, we are going to create an employee and production worker classes. And in this application, we will work with the inheritance. We will create an employee class that has employee name and employee number properties. And then we will create a production worker class that inherits from uh, the employee class. And the production worker class will also have properties for shift number and hourly pay rate. So um, I have the, have the form ready. We have uh, four text boxes so that the user enters the name, ID, number and pay. And we click display, which will create the object as uh, needed. And we will display all the information in our text box. This is a text box that I have uh, with the multi-line enabled. All right, so the first thing we can do is create the employee class. So I'll right click, add class, and obviously I'll call it employee. Now I'll make this class public. And in it, we, see we need a few properties. So uh, we need the employee name and employee number. That is the same for both the employee of any kind. Uh, whether it's hourly paid or uh, salary paid. So the production worker employee will inherit these two properties. So I'll create property string and it's going to be the employee name and the employee number will be an integer. So uh, when I have the properties ready, I can create a constructor and uh, in it we will supply the arguments for the name and, and the ID. So it's gonna be string name and integer ID. And we initialize our properties to these values that are being passed from the user. So our employee name will equal the name, oops, like that, and employee number will equal the ID. And we can create a toString method that displays these two properties. So it will do public override toString and we will return just these two properties. So employee name and we will add the employee name. And let's add the new line to it. So I'll do slash r and slash n and then we will also add the uh, id so employee id and we will add the employee number which is the id and again we can add the new line so this is our employee class and now we can inherit from it and create our production worker class. So again, I'll right click, add class, and I'll call it production worker. Again, I'll make it public. And this class inherits from the employee. So um, this class will obviously have the properties from the employee class, which is like, like I said, the name and ID but I also want an extra property for the shift number and hourly pay. So I'll create a property of integer for the shift number and I will create a property. This one's gonna be decimal for the pay. So this is gonna be the hourly pay. So now we can do our constructor. And in this one, we have to pass the arguments from our employee as well. So we will still need the string for name, integer ID, and now also the integer shift and decimal pay or hourly pay. But we also need to pass these values from our base class. So we will do the base and we will pass and you can already see 
not in the IntelliSense sense that it expects the name and ID to be passed from the employee. So that's what we'll do, name and ID. And within our constructor, we can uh, initialize our uh, properties. So our shift, shift uh, number will equal the shift and our hourly pay will equal the hourly pay argument hourly pay and I have obviously some kind of error there because everything is underlined and the error is that uh, obviously we don't use the semicolon there we, this is the constructor all right so um, like before from the employee class I'm going to create a two string method so it's going to be public override uh, to string and this one will return everything from the employee class so we will do the call the base dot to string so this one displays the name and ID and we'll concatenate to it or add to it also the shift and the pay there are the properties for production worker class so we will do our worker shift and we will add the property shift number and new line and we will also add the worker hourly pay and this one we will add the um, hourly pay property so hourly pay and another new line so so again, this base dot to string displays the name and ID, and we add the shift and hourly pay. So these are our two classes. So now we can do our form and create these classes. So first we need the input. So that's the four text boxes that we have. So the string name will equal txt name dot text. It's my text box for the name integer ID will equal this one is an integer so we need to convert to integer uh, and this one's gonna be the txt ID that text and I'm not doing any validation you know we should in the real world obviously validate all the input but this is a presentation of the object orientation so this is just kind of like a simulation so I'll make sure that the input is correct. So integer shift is the next text box. Again, convert to integer for the text box txt shift dot text. And the last one is our decimal pay. And we'll convert to decimal the txt pay dot text. And now we can create our object of the production worker. And when we do that, since it inherits from employee, it will automatically call the employee constructor and create a object of that as well. So we will have all the properties uh, available from the production worker as well as employee. Or better said, the production worker will have all the properties from employee available. Production worker worker equals new production worker and will pass the as you can see it's asking for the name id shift and hourly pay and now we'll just display the two string method and except hourly pay i called my decimal over here in this form pay that's my variable so uh, to output it, we'll do the txt output dot text, and we'll output the worker, which is the production worker dot to string, and it should display the name, ID, shift, and pay, because it combines the two string methods of the employee and production worker. All right, so let's run it and see what we get. So here's my employee name, and ID will be 101 shift first hourly pay let's say $75 uh, 
I click display and here is name Pavel ID shift and hourly pay so if I do Pavel 2 of ID I don't know 21 and second shift and this guy only earns $10 an hour I'll click display and now I have this information already in my text box so um, yeah this is the exercise fairly simple now this is only the first part in the next one we will create another employee type and we will uh, modify the program to accommodate it uh, employee type as well so stick around and i will see you in the next video take care